Sherald, as we're uh, talking about um, bringing on other preachers, and we've got a strategy for helping one another, myself in being included, and having uh, talked about that yesterday, uh, come to preach this, I'm really not sure where this is going to go, or how it's going to go. I've rewritten the notes four times, and I'm still not sure. So if at the end you feel, if, if, seriously, in, in a spirit of love and gentleness and support, you want to say, Clive, you didn't really get that together, please do tell me. Um, if, if something comes out of the wash, I'll be really blessed. Um, there, there is so much uh, in my heart and mind out of this. I have a real problem to distill. Actually, what is the one thing God is saying? I, I think I know, but I, I'll leave you that to you. I think this, this passage is about confidence. Trust and confidence. We come to a very interesting situation, and we'll go through the story, where God involves Abraham in his own counsel, his own uh, decision, and confidentially speaks to Abraham. I'm going to share with Abraham what I'm going to do. And Abraham is part of that intimate knowledge and relationship with God. And the other part of the confidence is that Abraham, realising what God is going to do, and the end result is he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham's got to come and work out, can I be confident that what God is doing is right? Is the judge of all the earth acting justly? So the story is in uh, Genesis chapter 18. Previously... Um, a few weeks ago now, the Lord and two angelic beings visited Abraham and Sarah and they reaffirmed the promise that they would have a child and they stayed and shared and had a meal with them. Sarah was a bit sceptical. She laughed and she was questioned, why are you laughing? Because I've just made this promise to you. Oh, I didn't laugh. Yes, you did. So they've had that sort of conversation. But uh, chapter 18, verse 16. When the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom and Abraham walked along with them to see, see them on their way. Then the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? <coughs> Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, <coughs> so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. For Abraham... And in the ways of God, there is an unfolding plan. Things are going to happen. Things are going to develop. And there's a question that goes from both parties. From God to Abraham. Can I trust Abraham? And the question from Abraham to God. Can I trust God? Can God trust Abraham? God has a plan for the whole world. As a church, we, uh, well, as, as elders, we, we've been looking at what, what is our purpose, what is our mission. And we actually come down to, actually, our mission is the message of the whole Bible. Read the Bible, you'll get, the, you'll, you'll get what the plan is. And it is this plan of salvation. But individually, God has chosen Abraham to be the man through whom a righteous nation that lives by faith will come to birth. And God has put his confidence in this man. I've chosen him. Chosen him. He, he will teach his children and the, the generations that follow to do what is right. And God is exercising faith. Alan, you brought back that word from spring harvest. God trusts you. And when God shares his heart with us, what he wants to do, the unfolding plan, he's actually trusting us. I'm giving you this. I'm putting it into your life. I'm, I'm letting you hold some of this. Now, as Christians, Paul says quite an amazing thing to the church in Ephesus. He says... But now, to us as Christians, we know the mystery of God. 
Do you know what the mystery of God is? I'm not trying to catch you out. Does, can anybody answer the question? What is the mystery that Paul says has now been revealed to us? Christ in you, the hope of glory. What, what was hidden, what God's plan was for all people, that the God would dwell by his spirit, the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, in our lives. And now we know it. God has shared his heart with us. We know the, the truth, the value of the gospel. And he goes on to say that in this person of Jesus Christ, the mystery is that at the end of time, all things will be united through Christ. There will become a, a universe again. All things will hold together. And he shared his heart with us. And we are entrusted with the deep mysteries of God. And God has shared with Abraham. This is, I've chosen you. And I've chosen you to be the father of this nation. James, writing about Abraham says he was actually a friend of God. Abraham became the friend of God. Now, there's a connection here. When Jesus with his, is with his disciples in the upper room, he says, I don't call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know his, his master's plans. He just, oh, that's what you want me to do? I'll go and do. Do you remember what Jesus says? I have called you friends. And then he says the most amazing thing. He says, everything I have learnt from my father. Get hold of that. He says, everything, everything the Son of God knew, he says, I've shared with you. And you're my friend. You're in on God's strategy, on his plan. And God has trusted us with these deep mysteries. So no wonder... And uh, later on, it, when, when the, the angels go, to go to go on their way, um, in, in verse, uh, where is it? 22, um, it says, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. There's a variant translation of that, it, it's in your footnote, which turns it round and says, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Actually, the Lord has come, Abraham. I've chosen to have a conversation with you. I'm coming to you to share my heart. <coughs> and we, as the people of God, have that friendship, that relationship with God, that intimacy. In, in the New Testament, it says that we have the mind of Christ. And that, um, Patrick and Robin have been helpful in that. And uh, as elders, we were talking about it yesterday discerning the will of God, that actually we can tune in and know what God is thinking, what his strategy, his plan is, and he trusts us in that. And when God gives a promise to us, he's exercising his faith. When God, if I can take Jane as an example, and the years ago when, when God gave a specific promise to Jane, he actually was looking at Jane and saying, I know what you can be. I know the potential within you. And when God opens up the secrets of his heart and, and shows the next step, he says, no, have confidence that you and I can walk this path together and we can get there. So there's Abraham, who is the confidant of God. But then Abraham discovering what God is going to do. Oh, you're going to Sodom and Gomorrah. I know about that place. Abraham has this questioning in his own heart and mind, can I trust God? <clears throat> can I trust God in anything and everything he does? He is going to do what is right. Heading towards Sodom and Gomorrah, it's a notorious city, Abraham knew about it. It has a reputation. In, in our day and age, it's associated with sexual immorality. Uh, Ezekiel very clearly says that wasn't the only problem. They oppressed the poor. There was corruption. Uh, there, there, was, there, there was violence. 
And God is heading towards that place. And Abraham thinks, now what's going to happen? What is God going to do? And the key question there, will the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord is going to act. Can I trust that his actions, what he brings about, will be right? Let's just pause for a moment. We know within the church and there's events in our own lives when we're facing dilemmas, we're facing difficulties, things don't seem to be opening up, and we are trusting our way to God. And in that, is there the basic, the, the ground rock uh, confidence that whatever God does in my life, through my life, he does what is right. We sing so often, he gives and he takes away, blessed be the name of the Lord. We love it when he gives, it's challenging when he takes away. But is, is what God is doing, is it right? Well, he's going to act because, he says, the, in 20, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry has, that has reached me. So God is saying, I've heard the cry of the, the powerless, the victims, the oppressed, the abused. Now I will come down and see if this report is accurate. And we can have confidence that the way God acts is right because his judgments are on the basis of what is true. I used to work for a company, and um, I won't give too many details, so I won't give it away, but there was a bit of an altercation between me and the owner, the, 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 the founder of this company. Um, he was very cross with a, 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 an interaction I'd had with one of the managers. And uh, he was going to, you know, tell me off. And I said to him, I said, if you want to know the truth, he said, I'm not interested in the truth. That was the end of it for me. I just, I tore into him. <laughs> how, can you, how, can you, how can you begin to make a judgment, bring a decision, bring discipline, if you're not interested in the truth? And, and God comes down into the situation to see what is true. I hear the cry. But actually, people might be just having a, a, a grumpy day. You might be annoyed with somebody. You might be trying to get your own back. Whatever. Let me find out what it's actually going on. And I believe God still does that today. God comes down into awful situations. And he knows actually what is going on. We're beginning to realise that when we pray, we actually don't need to tell, describe God to God the situation. You know, Lord, if you could see, and this is happening, and they need this, and we're telling him what he needs to do. We have a God who, well, as he said to Moses, I have seen, I have heard, and I've come down to deliver. The gospel is that God so loved the world that he got involved. He, he, he came and inhabited it's the incarnation. He, he, he tabernacled amongst his own people. And here, with Sodom and Gomorrah, a, a city full of uh, corruption and unrighteousness, but God says, I'm going to come down and get involved in this. There's a problem there. Because God has said to Abraham, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to visit Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. But now he's saying... Let me go down and investigate and find out what's going on. Uh, I thought you knew what was going on because you're going to act like this way. Or did you not really know what's going on? So why did, were you going to act like that way? There's a bit of confusion. Can I say, I don't think God was acting that way for his benefit. I think he was acting that way for Abraham's benefit. That Abraham will know that God knows what he's doing. Hold that for a moment. We need to come to that place where we know 
we know that God knows what he's doing. And God gives us very helpful signs, indications. He, he assures us as we go along. This walk of faith, it's although we walk by faith and not by sight, there are many signs, there are many indications that encourage us. Yes, God is in control. He knows what he's doing. Verse 22, the men turned away and went towards Sodom. But Abraham approached the Lord, because the Lord is standing before Abraham. And then we have this dialogue. Abraham approached him and said, and this is the dilemma he's got. Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? If you're going to destroy that city, do you take no regard for those who are righteous? Council of Wisdom and Might. And he's going to visit Sodom and Gomorrah. But he, he dares to stand before him. He knows, I'm, I'm not just dust and ashes and I'm coming before you, the Lord. But I'm going to put this before you. I, I believe that's um, where it says in the New Testament, with, with confidence, with boldness, we enter into the presence of God. I hear it so repeatedly uh, in lots of ways where I have some ministry. People say, you pray because you're better at it than I am and all this sort of stuff. And people are hesitant. And here is Abraham with this boldness saying, I'm going to put this before you, God. And God has created this scenario. He shared his heart with Abraham. That has caused Abraham a bit of a problem. So Abraham responds and says, God, if you're going to do this, can we just talk it through? And God doesn't knock him down and say, how dare you? No, let's talk this through. And in a sense, God is, uh, Abraham is asking the Lord to, to show mercy, to withhold his judgment. Else the wicked will perish, as well as the, the righteous. And the Lord graciously responds. He says... Okay, if there's 50 people there, I'll not destroy it. Yeah, but, okay, you said 50, but what if there's 49? <laughs> well, you know, it, it, does that one make a difference? So let, let's, let's, let's go down. What, what about 45? No, that's okay. And it goes from 30, 20, 10. Verse 33. Oh. He answered, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And when the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left. That's the end. You come to the place. You have to leave it with me. It poses the question, does our prayer change God's heart? When we're pleading before the Lord. So we have serious illnesses. We have people trying to sell a house, move house. We've got financial difficulties. Um, we're trying to ask the Lord, where do we move to? What is the next step? And do we think that God has a plan? This is it. It's settled, sealed, and you, we're just bits within the machinery. Or does God engage with us in that? I often, when, when people talk to me uh, about prayer, I often use uh, my own son as an illustration. When Tim was growing up, it, as a father and a son relationship, I'd say, Tim, what would you like to do? What's the choice that you'd like to make? What, what would you feel? Should we do this? Should we do this? Should we go that direction? What should we do? And I believe having... God is our Father. He does treat us as children. And we can engage in that relationship. And he does hear our cry. And he does see our distress. And he does come down to deliver. If you take the story of Jonah. Jonah was sent to pronounce destruction 
of the city. Oh. And he preached. And then <laughs> what happened? The people repented. And God withheld. It says God changed his mind. He changed his course of action because of what Jonah did. And I think for us, with the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and Abraham's um, dilemma, what God is going to do, I think we need to have the confidence to know that God, this is, God has done everything he could to save a situation. God has done everything he can to redeem. God intervenes to the, to the best of his grace, his ability to, to rescue, restore. And we can stand in that place and say, God, will you please pour your mercy upon this nation? Will you still, will you please with, it, withhold judgment? Plus, let, let these days of grace. Yeah. I wrote down some things here to which I've got no answer. When we see how things are in life, when we see either how God is acting or we believe he's not acting, what's going on here? And there are moral, ethical dilemmas that we face. And we say, where, where is God's activity in this? I'm not even going to begin. I tried to. I, I, I'm not going to even begin to look at that. Because what I feel the Lord is saying to me, for us today is, and it, it's, a, it's a phrase that we used to come across uh, when, when we were going to Bible camps, uh, when the children were small, we were, we were camping and in tents and caravans and all that sort of stuff. We went to loads of Bible weeks. The, the, the message always was from the platform, know your God. They all started with that. Know your God. But I think that is so important. Abraham was growing to know his God. Yeah. That here is a God that you can trust. Oh. And we can't ride, ride piggyback on Abraham's experience. The, the story that I've been through, the, the, the story that uh, Robin and Patrick have been through, that's our, that's our testimony. That's given us the faith that we've got. You can't make that your own. You've got to discover it yourself. That you know the God who is in charge of your life. And when he acts, he acts in all the right ways. And you can only discover that yourself. Because that's, that is the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that those who believe should not perish. God has done everything he can to rescue and redeem a situation. So with Sodom and Gomorrah, it isn't out of spite, it isn't anger. Oh, I've had enough of this people, they deserve it, uh, let's, uh, let's just pull time. Fine. God is a God of long-suffering patience and mercy and kindness. God does everything he can to reach out to rescue, redeem, and save. Oh. But in the final analysis, when he acts... Bye. The way he acts will be right. And we believe, well I believe, we believe that in the end, the judgments of God will be seen to be right in all the earth. That's what the psalmist said. When the final accounting comes, and we see how God has done, dealt with individuals, and the question is, what happens to, to babies who died? What happens to, to people who were killed by terrorist activities? What, what, what happens to people who have, have terminal illness and you know, their, their life was cut short? What happens when, when people are subjected to evil oppressors and, and their life is a misery and, and, and exterminated? <coughs> In the end, what God does with every individual and with all the nations of the earth, we will see will have been right. That is the God that we have. Now we also have, we, we do have a God who destroys cities. He said to Jeremiah, I have appointed you to uproot nations. And the kingdom of God does work in the ways, and it's true for this nation, 
It is God who exalts a nation. It's also a God who brings down nations. It's, it's, it's a God who puts people in positions of power and influence and responsibility. And sometimes you think, what is going on? In the end, what we see that God has done throughout the whole course of history, we will say he has done right. Because Abraham, having heard that God said, no, if there's only ten people there, I'll, I'll not destroy it. End of conversation. When the Lord had finished with spe speaking with Abraham, he left. And what did Abraham do? He returned home. I can go and live in a place of peace. I can trust God with the outcome of this situation. That's the faith that we have. That's the faith that we teach. An intimate relationship with God where we can converse friend of friend, where he shares his heart with us. You see, Peter had this problem. Jesus shared with him the, the, the secret of the kingdom, that actually the Son of Man is going to go to Jerusalem, he's going to suffer and die, and on the third day he's going to rise. And Peter said, never! I'm not, I'm not going to allow that! Yeah, you, that's a crazy way to, for God to behave. But it's, it's, it's getting hold of the ways of God at times are beyond our understanding. And at times, he may take us into a place where we think, this is death. But out of that comes life. He works in our life where we seem to be losing everything. It's all falling away. We can think about that in our own personal life. People, some people are saying, well, is that happening in our church? Is it all just falling away? I believe Jesus is the head of the King's Church. And it's him who builds the church. And it's him who, uh, in, the, in the revelation, it, it says that he is he's the one who walks amongst the churches and he will put out the light. When you've done your job. When it, it's, that's it. And I'm confident that when we look back, we will see that the judge of all the earth has done right in every way. For the world, for the nations, in the course of history. It's just too big a canvas for us to encompass. But I can make it my own story and say, when I, when I get to the journey's end, when the perfect has come, and I look back. Oh. You see, we sang it earlier. I've, uh, now I've gone and forgot the line, but it was something like, in, in, in everything he is, he's good, or is uh, uh, was the second song. In, in all his ways, good. In all his ways. Do we believe that? Do we believe that? Sometimes the things God shares with our heart in our, are heavy. Can we go to do that? And I do, and the psalmist, David, he, he often went to God and said, what? <laughs> what? What do you mean? And God, as a friend, invites us to engage in that prayer, in that dialogue, in that communion, that, co that fellowship with him. God, God, I just don't understand it. Okay, let's talk it through. And let the peace of God, which passes understanding, settle in your heart. So like Abraham, you can go home and live in peace. I think, now I'm going to stop. I think that's what I should have said. <laughs> and if there was anything of worth and value, if there was any good seed in that, I wanted to take hold of it. If there was a, a lot of straw and chaff and stubble, well, you know, it will get burned up. It's not important. But just for this morning, having said in, um, in the, um, the offering card, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Is our, is our confidence in God. Let me say, God has confidence in you. He's included you in. He's shared his heart with you. He, he trusts you with ministry, with gifts, with responsibility. God is exercised. Do we reciprocate and say, God, I trust you in all your ways. It might be time just to submit again our lives to the, to, to the, to the wisdom, the grace and the mercy of God. Lord, we bring everything we are, and, and I know.
know for quite a number of us, whether now or in the past, but there certainly will be in the future, there are things which we just find very puzzling and sometimes quite disturbing. But we're glad that we can put our whole lives into your hands. The things that we understand, the things we don't understand, the past, the present, the future, because you've said nothing, nothing in the past or the present or the future, nothing in all creation can ever separate us from your love, from your grace, from your goodness, from your providential care. So Lord, we do, well I do, perhaps other people here do this morning as well, we do trust you with the whole content of our lives. Knowing that when you act, you act rightly and wisely, truly and justly. You're not capricious, there's no shadow of turning with you. You are right in all your ways. A faithful God. Lord, I just thank you that the scriptures is full of stories of people who found that to be true. But Lord, we need it to be our own story. We need it to be our own experience that I know that when everything else has fallen away, you are the rock on which I stand. And you will stand through every step. In Jesus' name.